All right, welcome back to another episode of Just Buy Less Coffee, answering the deeper questions of American politics. My name is Troy, a.k.a. Keep Troy Blue. With me, as always, is Kathy Cannon, a.k.a. Cannon Spotter. And we have a very special guest on the program today, and it is Coach D. Coach D is uh, like my probably my favorite Midas uh, contributor on YouTube. Got a big uh, TikTok presence as well. Coach D, how are you, sir? Thanks for coming on the show today. Great. I, I really appreciate you saying that I'm your favorite, my Midas contributor, because you were one of my favorite, man. And, and I, <laughs> I and I really do. Uh, I don't know. I just I just I think they've done a good job of putting together the right people, because I, I find myself just watching other people all the time and reading yeah. their articles and all that, you know. So, yeah, it's awesome. I, I love it, man. But thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, I'm going to let that you... one over here. I'm like, I'm like, you guys are so cool. <laughs> and then there's I'm Kathy. Uh, no. <laughs> I know. I'm here, too. Well, so Kathy's anyway. the fan favorite on this show. So, like, you know, that's I'm, I'm the least popular one on my own show. But Kathy, yeah, Kathy's definitely took over the hey, fan base. I, uh, you know what? I'm delightful. <laughs> Shut up. So yeah, so how you doing, Kathy? Uh, so we had um, Happy Easter or Trans yes, Day yes. of Visibility, I guess if you want to, if you want to, if you want to call it that. Uh, so we had a little yeah. bit of a, a an outrage on the right, sort of fake outrage on the right about um, Biden declaring Trans Day of Visibility on March thirty first. But the problem is, is that it's it's always on March thirty first. It's been on it's been March thirty first since two thousand nine uh easter changes every year so oh, this day they just happened to fall on the same the same day they didn't you know biden didn't intentionally put trans day of visibility on easter sunday uh if he did who cares i mean you know what like it's not you know i don't i don't know i, I don't think it's that that big of a deal but they managed to blow it up into this huge this huge scandal i don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that yeah i i think it's funny <laughs> that um they make it seem like biden is the one who created Trans Day of Visibility. He right. didn't create. Yeah. He just. He just. He just. Uh, you know, just kind of gives a proclamation on that day, and it's. I mean, it's really just something that that politicians do, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, it, it's funny because, of course, I mean, we all know Marjorie Taylor Greene. I, I'm reading her oh stuff. And it's like, I'm like, what the the first person I came across was hers. I'm like, wait, Biden did what? You know, <laughs> I'm like, wait. <laughs> then I find out, you know, and I said, I said mm -hmm. this in one of my videos, like. They have access to the same internet we have access to. They have access to the same <laughs> Google. They know these things when they post it. Like Marjorie Taylor mm -hmm. Greene 100 percent knows that trans day of visibility started 15 years ago, that Joe Biden didn't do it. She knows that Easter falls on, but she also knows their audience. And so that's mm -hmm. that's really what this is about. They know their yep. audience, they know what they're doing. You know, we should stop pretending that these people are dumb. They're not. They're actually politically smart. And that's why mm -hmm. they're where they are. And that's why they are grifting and, and you know, doing what they're doing to the people that they're doing it to. They I mean, if you want to call it smart or maniacal or whatever, you know, they're just they're evil. But but they're not dumb. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying about it, too. I was like, if I like if I were a Republican voter, I would be insulted because it, they're not this dumb. They think their voters are this dumb. And it, it's it's just fake outrage because they need something to be outrageous about because Donald Trump is like bleeding money. Their party is bleeding money. They're, they're, they want to throw their speaker out again. Like they need to distract their voters with something like this that's bullshit. So they're not seeing the literal chaos that is the party, you know? And like right. to your point, D, like, like this, like Joe Biden probably didn't even know that this memo went out. This is very much run it by the chief of staff. Like he, he like 100% staffed this out. Somebody wrote he 100 this. He 100% does not care calendar. about, about he, this at like, all. It was probably the automatic sign machine. Like like yeah. he, like his his only knowledge of trans visibility day was probably <laughs> everybody complaining about trans visibility yeah. day. <laughs> yes. Which ironically made it all the more visible. So Marjorie Taylor Greene did more for Trans Visibility Day than did Joe Biden. Because did I, I can know I be it was the, Trans Visibility? No, I didn't. Can I? Yeah, exactly. Can I be the like cis white guy that had no idea that there was a Trans no Visibility idea. Day? And now I do. Like that's awesome. Yeah, Great. not a Good clue. But I'll never forget it now, Marge. Thanks. <laughs> and 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 let's like, just be what clear. an ally. Yeah, and let's be clear here. Not one single Easter egg hunt was disrupted <laughs> because of Trans Day of Visibility. Like not one. Like. Your church services still went. You still ate a bunch of chocolate candy and all of that. Like, it's crazy to me that this was. But like, again, like kind of like you said, Cannon. Yeah. I would be offended. I would be offended. Like, I watch. You know, I always tell people there. Like, Why don't you watch The Bachelor? It insults my intelligence. I, you know, <laughs> I think 
that's what these people are doing. Like mm -hmm. you, your intelligence is being insulted and you're not even standing up for yourself. I would be yep. so mad that they were trying to feed me this crap all the time. And like Republicans mm -hmm. are always looking for the next fake traversy too. like every day. I mean, you go away from your phone for a few hours, you're going to come back to a Republican controversy. It's just, it's, mm -hmm. No. The other I love that fake traversy. I just fake wrote that down. Like yeah. fake traversy. I love it. I'm stealing it. It's I like love it. Kathy's situation ship or something like that. I like that. I, I don't have a situation. <laughs> I have a, a long line of destroyed men. Yeah, behind destroy, me. yeah, men that you destroyed in the past. <laughs> and uh, it should probably stay that way. <laughs> The other thing was the the no religious symbols on eggs. This was another one that they, they tried to pin on Biden, oh, uh, saying that there couldn't be any religious themes uh, on the symbols or re religious themes or symbols on the eggs that they were decorating for the for the egg decoration uh, contest. That's this has been true for fifty years. Uh, it's a rule that started in nineteen seventy eight under former under President Jimmy Carter. Uh, this was a rule that was in place during Donald Trump's administration. So the actually the egg board had to come out and release like a like I put out a release today talking about you know clarifying that they you know this is a rule that's been in place for for fifty years. So uh, I, first they of all, said, I love that there's an egg board. They they said quote the American egg board has been supporter of the White House Easter egg rule for over forty five years and the guideline language referenced in recent news reports has consistently applied to the board since its founding. So yeah, again, was it, would you say fake, fake grade, fake outrage, fake, fake, fake traversy, fake oh, traversy. That's right. That's yeah. Right. Like yeah. how is this the world we're living in? Honest to God. Like, it's like they forgot the first amendment is a thing like <laughs> state sponsored religion. Not okay. I the other was, the other one was, the other one was the question. Oh, go I ahead. The I asked myself like, how is this the world we're living in? Like what? <laughs> Every day, I, I watch some of these, like, um, I watch Adam Mockler's videos a lot. And, mm. like, my gosh, like, I'm just, like, these people are roaming around without any supervision. Like, zero. <laughs> no supervision at all. Like, they're just roaming the earth. The, some of them have driver's licenses. Oh, no, don't tell me some that. These people are literally <laughs> next to you at a red light. And they really no. believe, like... I don't know, Dementry. I, I heard, I've heard some people say the craziest. I just, I'm, I'm asking myself, I think historians are going to be studying this era for years. Like, it's and baffling. I, I think they're going <laughs> to be like having a hard time writing books because they're going to be like, what should we literally say about that president, that time when all these people were just nuts for a while? And I'm going to, I want to go on record right now and tell you guys, there's going to be a time very soon where there's going to be a lot of people pretending they weren't magas. Okay. It's going to be a time I have said suit. that so many times. You <laughs> have okay, yeah. It, it's going to happen because just mm -hmm. like they're they've pretended, you know, they they weren't like weird about the vax mm -hmm. and or they mm -hmm. didn't they weren't QAnons, you know, like a lot of people try to pretend that now. I literally have yeah. DMs that I've saved of people I went to high school with who were mm -hmm. like, "Hey, Demetrius, you're a pretty smart guy. You ever check out QAnon?" <laughs> and like I literally the first time someone said it to me, I typed in QAnon. I read the first line and I said to the person, you know, this is bullshit, right? <laughs> and they're like, oh, did you read? I, I don't need to read more I than a line. Well, this is bullshit. Like, I got to mm -hmm. like JFK or something and I was like, no. Like, <laughs> oh. God. Yeah. I was like, see, in school they teach us how to find the bullshit sources. So I knew pretty quick that was a that was a bullshit one. But yeah, I keep saying that like uh, Donald Trump will be like Nixon, right? Like Nixon went in a fucking landslide in seventy two, right? But by seventy seven, who voted for Nixon? Nobody. Oh, nobody. I never voted for Nixon. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. nobody would mm -hmm. admit to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other one on this was um, real quick was Caitlyn Jenner. She uh, she got caught in some. What'd she do? hypocrisy so she tweeted out uh she responded to kareen john pierre is talking about trans day of, transgender day of visibility uh caitlin jenner said hey there dot 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 it's called easter sunday the holiest day in the christian faith that billions of people practice worldwide like they just really like ran ran with this thing that uh that you know biden was replacing um easter sunday with trans day of visibility mm -hmm. but uh several years earlier in 2017 caitlin jenner actually tweeted there's no better visibility than with my sisters by my side hashtag trans day of visibility so caitlin jenner is caitlin jenner knew about uh trans day of visibility i didn't um but she yeah. was uh she's been she's been a supportive of that for for years except for this year when it could be a could be some outrage for them so it's just so just case 
Does she realize how much like Republicans hate her? She's not. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't. She hasn't got the memo on that. Like they don't like you, Caitlyn Jenner. Like it's like the log cabin Republicans not being mm-hmm. invited. It's like oh, we're so shocked. None of us are. And Caitlyn, you're gonna <laughs> get. I don't, I remember the black guy who went to the TPUSA event. He's a black gay guy. Mm-hmm. And he was shocked that he got called the N word and and also like like gay you know yeah. slurs and mm-hmm. stuff like that. It's like, what did you expect? So yeah. exactly, gonna have her aha moment at some point mm-hmm. as well. And actually, I'm actually yeah. surprised that they call her Caitlyn because I've seen a lot of like, I am too right wingers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, calling her mm-hmm. Caitlyn. I'm like. You guys won't even say he, she, or they because you're offended. But you I know. So I don't even understand it. The, again, it's all fake traverses. They're it's just all fake. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of some of that, so, so yeah, uh, DEI is their favorite target now, and they're actually bringing yeah. it forward for this Baltimore bridge collapse. Mm-hmm. So we had a. Uh, this reminds me of um, the Exxon Valdez. We <laughs> back in the day, we had just had this container ship. Just slap into this Baltimore Bridge, uh, the Francis Scott Ski Francis Scott Key Bridge. The thing just completely collapses, which is, by the way, is like my worst nightmare. By the way, I hate bridges. Mm-hmm. Um, Me too. I've seen They're I've spooky. seen I've seen videos of this bridge like going across. It actually looked like a really scary bridge to begin with. Uh, so anyway, but yeah, I don't know what. So Kathy is our resident conspiracy theorist. No, I am not. Discovered. I on I have last- one area. No, D, I'm going to tell you, there's one area that I am a conspiracy theorist, and it is the royal family, because oh, I am British. I have to be. It's the law, right? Um, but also, don't get me started, because I think Charles is dead. Anyway. Uh, so, what, Kathy, what are your conspiracy theories on the Baltimore Bridge collapse? Uh, and then we'll get into some uh, DEI okay. stuff, like this, because okay. the, the bridge collapsed because of DEI, clearly. Um, obviously, that's what it is. Um Okay, I heard a conspiracy theory, but this is not mine, okay? And I want to be very, very clear. I do not believe this because sure. I heard that it was um, – what was it? It was on Twitter, so you know it's bullshit. But that it – because it was a Russian attack or it was a terrorist attack because Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> so it was an intentional attack against American values, right? Exactly. That is the correct response, just the exacerbated, like, what the fuck, right? Correct. Um, but I don't think this was a conspiracy at all. I think this is what happens when you don't invest in your own country's infrastructure for 50 years. Yeah. I think yeah. this is what happens when like the DO or the Department of Transportation has for 20 years been grading your infrastructure like C minus at best. Right. Like yeah. they, they, they told us that 85 percent of America's bridges and roads are in desperate need of repair 12 years ago. So yeah. am I shocked? No. Do I think it was a conspiracy? No, I don't. I think a weak bridge in need of repair got slammed into by a gigantic cargo ship, and that will make a bridge fall, especially when the bridge is already broken. (laughs) Yeah. And not to mention, you know, if you just look at history every year or so, maybe Mm -hmm. even a couple times, we have some type of, you know, we had the... Mm -hmm. uh, I forget the the train uh, the derailment. train derailment, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we they're, they're just things happen. Like I, I believe in statistics. Mm-hmm. Like I am a like that is my religion is statistics. Like <laughs> I believe like there are things that are going to happen statistically speaking because they do, and there's no mm-hmm. proof otherwise than that things are going to happen. And so when people jump to conspiracies, like I have a friend, I'm going to go off on a tangent for a second here. <laughs> no, 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 I love it. Because we were in high school, but we're literally not friends now because he's crazy. But <laughs> he, he, he sent me videos of like, he was the, the, the uh, you know, died suddenly guy, right? Oh boy. He would send me videos of this dude, like, in, and there was this black dude with this like weirdly shaped kind of head. And this is just me making fun of the guy and I shouldn't be, but he was a normal guy, but he would sit in this house and they, I don't know if the guy didn't play, pay his bills or something, but like there was barely any lighting and he would sit there and he'd be like, yeah, don't go in Walmart after January 23rd because there's going to be FEMA camps and you're going to be stuck in there forever. And he would send me this stuff and he'd be like, bro, you, 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 you tell me this ain't true. And I'd be like, bro, I'm going into Walmart after January 23rd. bro." And like, and I would call him on stuff like, bro, like, remember that conspiracy you told me? Like, yeah, mm-hmm. that, that didn't happen, man. But then he would just move to the next one. And this is what these con- conspiracy people kill me with that. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, like, like again, QAnon people will say they weren't QAnon. Trumpers will say they weren't Trumpers. MAGAs will be like, mm-hmm. I never flew those flags. 
conspiracy mm-hmm. theory people are the best. They just move on to the next one and they act like you're stupid if you try to call them yep. out on stuff. You know? <laughs> so that's what it's I like that. Yeah, that's what I feel like. I know. Did you ever see the flat earth documentary where they tried to prove that the earth was flat, but they inadvertently <laughs> proved that it was curved? They're like, huh, that's weird. Like, it's not really weird, <laughs> actually. Know. It's 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 actually quite I, understandable. <laughs> I'm convinced that the flat earthers, like, if you ever spent some time listening to those people, I think the flat earth is like a gateway drug to basically to like fascism. I, I think that they lure those people in. Because if like I, I used to, for some reason, I got caught on flat Earth TikTok, so I would be sitting in these lives with these flat Earthers, and like for some reason you could, yeah, for some reason you could tell that they don't actually believe what they're saying, but they've structured it in a way where they, you know, it's very, it's very alluring, I think, for like an unintelligent mind, for like a non-critical mm-hmm. thinking mind. I think they just lure these people in, and then they give them, they can give them little bits of stuff about because uh, they're all, they're all like racist, they're all Nazis. They can just mm-hmm. like sort of lure them into their cult um i think it's a gateway well, drug troy i don't know if you've ever seen it cute- um Koshi, I, I, if you have either because to your point like that they go to the easiest one did you ever see the conspiracy chart like the the pyramid that like kind of elevates uh conspiracies so you're right like that's literally what they do and it's it's for people who are intellectually lazy they give simple answers to people who don't want to do the deep critical thinking that's what it is here's I, a simple solution oh that sounds right the the Q stuff is weird though. I don't um I don't know. Has, do have you watched the um since we're since we're Midas? Uh, have you watched the Against All Enemies uh, documentary? Oh, and I just, they just put I out. Crossed that. I did not yet. I did not. It's it's really good. We, uh, audience, Kathy, everybody, watch it. Um, it's about it's a documentary produced by um uh, a group of veterans that have that have been basically. They're uh, watching the the decline of veterans in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, as they've entered the Q movement, as they've entered the MAGA movement, and and sort of t- all tied around January sixth. But it's really spooky, and as a lot of that is like these guys that were just like JD Vance and um, this other guy that ran for governor in in New Jersey or something, and even like um, even Mike Flynn, like these guys that were like really honorable troops and yeah. soldiers, and then. Mm-hmm. Like really like good like really smart people and like not crazy at all. In fact, like a lot of them were like Obama supporters back in the day, and now they've just gone completely off the rails. I don't know. It's just weird. It's just creepy how the Q stuff really just took off. I don't know. It's it's like they had well, a, it's like the internet just triggered everybody for some reason. I yeah, I watched. I had a weird one. thought about this. Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. I want to hear a weird thought. Up, um, because <laughs> it's. You know how like the football players with the head injuries and it would like show an increased oh, level yeah. of like violence and, and, and erratic behavior. I, I wonder if it's something related to like military injuries or military trauma or something that makes them susceptible to it. Or even just the way that like boot camp kind of breaks you to to remake you and like they know how they did that. So are like I don't want to go all Manchurian candidate. Okay, maybe I do have a tinfoil hat. It's fine. But like, like they could be structuring the messages in a way that they know will resonate with them because they've given them messages like that in the past. So, you know, like when something feels familiar, you're more likely to like believe it. So mm-hmm. I, I wonder if it's not like one of those two, like related to brain injuries or, you know, complications from something related to like the war, the, the burn pits or lead poisoning or whatever, or, you know, subliminal messaging by the government because i have I don't, it's fine it's fine it's fine i'll go i'll go, I'll go to my corner now <laughs> I, I literally like i think so my my daughter very smart um she turned 23 and she is a um she's very smart and so she's talking to me about this stuff one day and she was saying how you know we have a nephew who you know he doesn't do anything but he, they allow him to be on youtube all day and so he's got like his own little channel and he's trying to do stuff. And he, when he saw that I had a following on TikTok, he's like, uncle, how'd you do that? You know? And my, 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 my daughter was like, we need to, you know, we need to like, t- cause our family's very active. We do a lot of stuff. And both of my daughters are college track athletes. I was a college track athlete. My wife was an athlete. Like, so we all, we, we've always done sports, all these things. I think people have too much time to sit around and be on mm-hmm. here. And I also think that mm-hmm. the other problem is, is like, when you used to have conspiracies, you'd say it to your friends and stuff, and they'd be like, just shut up. You're crazy. Shut up. <laughs> now you go online and you find yeah. a million people that are like, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, JFK's coming mm-hmm. back with Princess Di <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. And like, so now, like, 
there's no there's no like filtering that there's no you know my mom would have smacked me like a few years ago <laughs> some of the people say, you know but now you can find a lot of people who believe what you believe and you can find them within your city and then you mm -hmm. guys can go to bars together and oh, you can talk oh. about it. and so i think because i mean some of this stuff i look i i think okay mm -hmm. a rational person can't believe that mm -hmm. but then i know rational people who believe it so it's like yeah. I don't know. It, there's again, mm -hmm. I'm gonna study this for years, and I don't know because mm -hmm. I think I think they think the way that we're talking about them, though. I think they talk about like like us like that. I can't yeah, believe, like how could they believe Joe Biden was elected? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. How how did they not see the suitcases mm -hmm. of ballots? Like they're right there. How did they not see the number change on CNN at 3 a.m.? It went from like two million votes to three million votes for Biden, and how did they not see that? And it's like, well, that. Not the because not they, the official tabulation and that's you know but yeah I think they think that we're crazy like it's di yeah. two different realities for sure yeah yeah Absolutely. to me it's like you know how like every group of friend has an idiot right but like the internet <laughs> has allowed every group of friends idiot to like become all a the group idiots of idiots together you know like and they're all on Facebook and like you know confirmation bias like oh yeah me and all my idiot friends like yeah but it's you and all your idiot friends, like, see, yeah. what did you just say? Right, right. Like, if you think they're idiots, why are you believing the same things as them? The other thing is uh, DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, which is mm -hmm. just like the 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 outlandish yeah. idea uh, that we should, you know, learn about other people's cultures, that we should be white centric in the United States. You know, uh, largely a corporate thing, just making sure we're having, you know. Uh, that we're diversifying our hiring process. Not that we're hiring, and this is what they, this is what they, the point they're trying to make with all this like airline shit, like blaming DEI for planes, uh, doors flying off of planes or whatever, which is just horribly racist. And we, you know, we, we have no idea why the door fell off the plane. It certainly wasn't DEI, it was cost cutting, which is what it was, mm -hmm. um, corporate cost cutting. Yeah. But DEI does not mean, uh, that we're just going to hire anybody who's not qualified just because that they're, they're black or, or you know, they're a, a minority or, uh, or a woman or gay or whatever. Like we're still hiring qualified people. We're just making sure that we're expanding our, our pool of qualified people. So, I, but I don't even know, I don't even know how they're blaming DEI on this, this bridge thing. I, it doesn't even make sense to me. It, I mean, are they saying that the, the, uh, the, the, the ship's pilot was was DEI or the bridge construction was DEI or something? I don't know. It doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense. I think they were blaming the mayor, yeah. They oh, the were mayor. saying the mayor was a DEI mayor, which oh. mayors are elected, not hired. But um, I, <laughs> right. I um, so I did a, did a video about this when I was uh, 20 years ago when I was applying for the job that I have now as a professor of this college and coach. I went to one of my favorite teachers. He was my algebra teacher. I asked him for a letter of recommendation white man. I grew up in a very predominantly white conservative area. Uh, as he's handing me the letter of recommendation, and, and believe me, I had I had already taught high school. I'd already been, a, like, I was recruited mm -hmm. actually for the job, but I had to mm -hmm. apply. So, right, because legal because reasons. I had a very good coaching, coaching mm -hmm. uh, resume. He has, mm -hmm. as he's handing me the, the letter of recommendation, he says something to the effect of, and I can't remember word for word, but it was like, hey, and you know, if, if, if they need to hire a couple of black people and that helps you get this job, then that's, that's great also. And it like literally floored me because I was like, God damn, like I worked like, like, I mean, in my small town, I, I'm, I have a, my name means something. My, my kids mm -hmm. name means something. Like we're very respected family. And we, mm -hmm. and like, and like for him to say that was just, that killed me. That was 20 years ago. And like, yeah. Even now, like in my department, I and 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 my wife is 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 white. And when I was younger, we we've been together since high school. And when I was younger, oh, that's so cute. Hard and stuff, yeah, I throw that in there. You know, high school sweethearts, but no, I mean we believe me, we wouldn't put we wouldn't sell anyone to do that. But uh, <laughs> but she would she would ask a lot of times, you know, like you know, like because I would try to I would always be trying to outwork everyone. You know, I never wanted mm -hmm. to be thought of as like, oh, this guy got handed this or whatever. And yeah. if you talk to an, enough, especially successful black people, they will mm -hmm. say that to you that they that they've gone through that, you know. Mm -hmm. Um so it really so what bothers me about the whole thing right now is that like if you really look at the the numbers, like mm -hmm. black people still aren't really getting hired at, mm. at like crazy at all, yeah. Like, 
So when, mm-hmm. when like I've heard, like I've had friends from high school say things like, "Yeah, I didn't get a job at didn't I was I applied for a highway patrol here in California, but I didn't get it because they had to hire." A, and I and I'll say to them, "How do you even know that? Because they don't right. disclose that information. Mm-hmm. You a black person get hired in a position you wanted, and you you assume that they couldn't mm-hmm. be better than you, so it must be affirmative action." And I've spent mm-hmm. a lot of time telling a lot of people, "Bro, you're not as smart as you think you are." You're not <laughs> as mm-hmm. good at that job as you think you are, maybe they're just better than you, you know? Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, the numbers don't even, people, it, it's almost like, I, I hear this a lot, like, like a lot of these like white Republican men mm-hmm. want to be pressed so badly that any mm-hmm. like kind of adversity now it's like, oh, it's because of wokeism and it's because mm-hmm. of DEI, because of critical race theory. And, you know, and it's mm-hmm. like, the numbers are still the same. Like 98% mm-hmm. of like, corporate ceos or whatever like white like mm-hmm. yeah believe me man you guys are still getting hired like, um, <laughs> yep. you know, like well first man, of all those I have, like racial quotas are illegal right i mean they can't yeah, technically yeah, yep, they have baki versus regents man that's the case uh, yeah like but you get like you know to your point like if you have a if you have a uh a black person, a person of color in in a position, they've probably worked harder than the white guy to be there. I'm just gonna just gonna lay that out there. But yeah, yeah. I um, I thought I had a thought and I lost it. Never mind. I'm oh, sorry. Couldn't have been important. No, it's okay. Couldn't have been important. Oh, actually, yeah, I did. Okay, so I thought um, the funniest part about it to me is that like diversity, equity, and inclusion didn't actually come about for like affirmative action reasons. It wasn't actually designed initially to be about fair hiring practices. It was to broaden the marketing base to appeal to consumers that weren't buying products. It was, Mm. why aren't black people buying our cereal? So we need to study black people so they buy our cereal. That's what it was. And then they realized that the best way to appeal to these populations was to have some of them in the room right so like that that's why it evolved into that because it helps them reach a broader market and that's why it's like so present in corporate america because like black people have money believe it or not people like i know you don't want to believe that they but they have money and they buy products and corporations know that and want their money and want them to buy their products so that's where it came from like it, it, it just it has always blown my mind that this actually was born out of like corporate mm-hmm. america <laughs> I'm glad you said that because it's so true. Mm-hmm. Like I have to remind people, and I'm glad you said. I'm so glad you said mm-hmm. it because everything is about money. Like mm-hmm. none of these companies. Everything. Like when people, I've I've heard people say, "Oh, there's so many black people on commercials now, or all these yeah. interracial families," because they studied it and they said this is a way for us to make more money. You think McDonald's gives a crap about black people? No, they <laughs> don't. They want our money. That's all everything. They care about greenbacks. That's what they Yes. Care. And so when people are like, oh, they're they're hiring more black people. They're not hiring more black people because it's it's altruism. They're hiring more black people because they think it's going to give them more black customers, which means mm-hmm. more black money. Like that's that's really just it, you know. That's simple. So, yeah. Nike, yep, uh, Nike embraced Colin Kaepernick and the Black Lives Matter movement because the number one customer for Nike for shoes is, is young black men. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's not, yep. you know, yeah, it's, it's always the money. Science. It's always money. Yep. Always money. Uh, the other thing. Yeah. And then the other thing on this was just that the so, yeah, the Maryland governor, Wes Moore, mm-hmm. um, he's they've it's driven a lot by Joy Reid. They've started to say that, like, you know, DEI is sort of the new N word. Mm-hmm. Like they'll be like this DEI mayor, oh, this oh, DEI yeah. governor. So it's just basically like a, a you know a sub in for these. This it's it's yeah. the new racism. It's just a new. It's their it's coded language. Slur. That's that's what yeah. it is, and it's not very coded because they're not very clever apparently. Yeah, like we yeah. we we cracked that code pretty quick. I think <laughs> <laughs> didn't take long. Yeah, yeah they've never mm-hmm. been very good at uh their, mm-hmm. their dog whistles aren't dog whistles. They're like so obvious, and then and I love how they try. I I I know I can spot a racist person anytime they say what was racist about that? Like, you don't, you know, like, stop, stop doing this. Stop seeing, you know, mm-hmm. someone asked me what was racist about um, the, uh, oh my gosh, the Michigan guy, the, the uh, Mac, Mac, mm, the guy who said, oh, there's buses of illegal invaders coming oh, in. Oh yeah. Like a basketball. Uh, I don't, the like, basketball yeah. team. Yeah. Yeah. Someone was like, well, what's racist about that? <laughs> uh, illegal um, invaders. First of all, you saw some people who weren't white and you decided they must be illegal and they're in mm-hmm. buses like they, you know, they they want you to be able to if 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 you can't say someone said the N word or, you know, like didn't if it wasn't overt, you can't mm-hmm. prove it. 
racism. Like we're not dumb. We we know what covert right. mm-hmm. looks like. We know what subtle mm-hmm. racism looks like, and we know what dog whistles are. And mm-hmm. so do you guys. That's why you use them. That's why you know they mm-hmm. do that. So, yeah, it's just they've never been good at that anyway. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Maybe uh, they think we're as dumb as they are. Uh, that's why we think we don't get it. I'm like, no, we got it. We got it. Yeah, uh, a couple more stories. Uh, so anti-government protests in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, uh, massive protests against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, calling for his government to step down for Israel to hold early elections uh, and for the country, for Israel's leaders to agree to a hostage deal that will bring home 130 captives, the, the, the rest of the 130 captives in Gaza. Uh, there was, so it's, it's basically an anti-government movement. I think these are some of the same people that were protesting before October 7th. This is just kind of the anti-Netanyahu or a coalition here. I don't know that this has too much to do with like the, like, um, you know, sympathy for the Palestinians or whatever, or maybe it does. I'm not sure, but it's, it's more about just sort of the corruption aspect of it, of Netanyahu's government. Can we just um, point out that Canon called this one? Like, did I, did I, or did I not called this one? I love being ahead yeah. of the world. Uh, a couple quotes. It is beyond belief that this country, which was so successful, is being led down this path by this one man and his henchmen. End quote. Quote, we need elections. This government doesn't have the public's faith, and now they want to pass a law allowing one in five people. Okay, so the, so Netanyahu is also creating exceptions for military service. So for folks who don't know, uh, military service is compulsory in Israel. Everybody serves from the time they're 18 to about the time they're 20. Um, and right now they've called up all of their reserves. So basically, if you're um, basically the, almost what. the entire society, the young people in the society are serving in this military. But Netanyahu has been kind of carving out exceptions for that. One of them is for the ultra orthodox community. They don't have to serve. So yeah. people are resentful of that. There's, there's one person said they're passing a law allowing one in five people to avoid army service. So some resentment about the uh, the carve outs that they're that they're doing. So, but yeah, just this a lot of their- unrest. A lot of unrest Dude, in uh, in Israel over this. This is their Vietnam, remember? Because it was yeah, the same yeah. thing. Like if you had the money and the means, you could get a deferment to go to Vietnam. And now the same thing's happening in Israel. But just I'll point out, this is a week after Benny Gantz left his meeting with Justin Trudeau, which was a week after he met, like left his meeting in the White House, which was the same week that like Chuck Schumer called for elections. And like, <laughs> like I'm just saying, I think this is going to play out exactly like like I said. It like this is. What's going to happen? They're going to kick Net Not Yahoo out, and you're going to get two steps back to center, still right wing government. <laughs> He's gonna, they're going to have to call elections pretty soon. It's getting pretty crazy yeah. over there. You think yeah. they're really going to? You think they'll really kick him out? Oh yeah, because you weren't here. You actually don't know my. Okay, so I actually said that I was. I guess I sound so tinfoil hatty. This episode, yeah, you are the conspiracy. Go ahead, go ahead. I just am not. It. I. I am the political theorist. That's what I am. That's what I'm going to call myself. Um, okay. but my theory was, is that like Biden, he's because I have always like been impressed with Biden's foreign policy skills. Like that's why Obama picked him because he needed some foreign policy chops. Um, and I've been saying that he, he knows enough about foreign policy to know not to do it in public. And he's been doing it behind the scenes. And he's getting frustrated with Benjamin Netanyahu. So it was, I think, two or three weeks ago, Troy, I don't remember what it was, but Benny Gantz, who's like the, yeah. the second, uh, his biggest political rival with the most political capital after Netanyahu, basically, who would be prime minister if Benjamin Netanyahu wasn't. Um, so Joe Biden starts being critical of Israel, right? Benny Gantz comes and visits the White House. Joe Biden calls for an immediate ceasefire. Chuck Schumer calls for elections. Benny Gantz goes to Canada meets with Justin Trudeau and a week later there's civil protests. I mean, that sounds like America's planning a coup in Israel and we're pretty good at that because cool. I've seen us overthrow enough countries to know what it looks like. So That's deep. <laughs> yeah, deep is one word for it. But, but, uh, <laughs> but I like it and Benjamin Netanyahu is feeling kind of the, uh, the pressure a little bit too because I saw him mm-hmm. on Fox News and he's like, you know, basically saying we're going to do what we want to do. So, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, we'll see. We'll see. I think that's interesting, though. Uh, for also, for the first time, the majority of Americans disapprove of the Israeli military response. This was from a poll this week. 55% of Americans disapprove of really? uh, Israeli's military response in Gaza. 10-point increase since November. Uh, wow. Only about one in three approve. So 36. That's a lot of, uh, uh, that's a lot of people that don't know, I guess. But uh, so 36% approve, 55% don't approve of Israel's action. So interesting. Uh, 
That is crazy. Uh, tides are there. turning. Tides are turning yeah. on that. Uh, Democrat Maryland Lands. This was huge. Democrat Maryland Lands uh, won a huge upset victory for Alabama. Uh, I think it was the t- yeah Alabama ten Alabama uh, House District ten, uh, the Alabama State House. She was uh, she beat Republican Teddy Powell. It was a special election to fill the seat that was last held by uh, a Republican, David Cole, who was arrested. Uh, so he was arrested and indicted for voter fraud. So we had to fill his seat. Uh, Hold on. So arrested was, and indicted for voter fraud. For voter fraud. <laughs> oh, God. I hate it. Right. <laughs> of course it is. Re- yeah. It's always Republicans committing voter fraud. So uh, we had this special election. We had this Democrat, Marilyn Land. She had lost to, to Cole in 2022. She lost by seven points to this guy, Cole, who's now uh, indicted for voter fraud. Uh, she won by 25 points. She won the special election in Alabama. This Democrat won this, set this seat by 25 points. That's a 32-point swing in two years. This is a Trump plus one district, so it's a swing district to be sure. Uh, still, you know, Trump, Trump plus one, but, um, but, but 25 points, she won this seat. So it was kind of a, uh, it's kind of incredible. The first election since the Alabama IVF ruling, mm. and this woman made her campaign largely about abortion access and IVF access and all this. So a real bellwether, again, another one of these like real bellwether for mm-hmm. the Roe v. Wade vote, uh, beating this Republican by 25 points. So that's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I don't want to I don't want to get complacent, you know, but I do, you know, we noticed all the, all the victories for the Democrats since all of this came out. Um, and it, and it, and it does look bad for Donald Trump, but then I, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it's still, you know, it still worries me a little bit with him because you just never know. Um, and yeah. then stuff with Israel and, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, that they've, what, what the, uh, what the Republicans have done a good job at, of is like framing Democrats as like these radicals. Mm-hmm want to you know kill babies and you know like just these you know these horrible things and stuff but like it it, it may be working you know and so yeah. i think democrats yeah. have to be very cognizant of you know their messaging and i think i think that's one thing democrats are horrible at is messaging. oh yeah oh yeah that's terrible or like it just mm-hmm. it seems like it would be very easy to just like mm-hmm. if i were joe biden i would talk a lot about like like college loan debt forgiveness, you know, I would talk a lot, a lot about that. I would talk a lot mm-hmm. about being good people and, and love mm-hmm. is love, you know, and, and, and the, the infrastructure bill and mm-hmm. these types of good things, you know, and then mm-hmm. sometimes we let ourselves get caught into like some of the conspiracy type of things that we should stay away from. But if the, not, not, not you can, your stuff. But just hey, my just, stuff just, comes just, true. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The messaging needs to be better. You know that yeah. reminds me of the uh, the all every one of my conspiracy theorists type of people that were mm-hmm. back conspiracy theorists and stuff like that have been. They've posted things like, "I'm running, I'm running out of a bunch. I'm running out of conspiracies because all of mine came true." And I'm like, "Not one has, <laughs> not one. Like <laughs> not a single one. Has, what are you talking about?" Oh, well, have you, you guys know. seen you know, the died suddenly video, all the soccer players and stuff? Like, oh, my, oh my God. Pete Charles is a diversity hire. That's my that's my conspiracy. Uh, yeah, maybe. No, I just think it's funny. Like, to the point about Democratic messaging, like, the the I, irony of how Democrats have been characterized by the right as, like you said, these evil, like, scary monsters that are trying to take over the world. When I would say the number one criticism of the Democratic Party of Democrats, like within our own party is that they're fucking feckless. So like (laughs) my frustration is that they never stand up for themselves and can't get anything done. And your concern is that they're evil and running the world. Like I wish they could run fucking Congress. Right. Yeah. Yeah. uh, It's just amazing to me. And same with Joe Biden, right? He's simultaneously a senile old man that can't get dressed, but also a puppet master pulling the strings of the world. Right. I'm like, just pick a lane. Like pick yeah. a crazy lane and drive in it because yeah. I can't keep up. <laughs> this was another example of of just polling shitting the bed. Um, it, yeah. Internal polling by both campaigns showed basically a virtual dead heat. Lands campaign showed her with a three point lead over Powell, so like basically within the margin of error. Mm-hmm. Uh, Powell's campaign showed him up with an eleven point lead. Uh, she ended up winning by 25 points. So again, just polls completely missing the mark on That's this. Really Everyone was shocked by this. Um, but again, it doesn't take into account this, you know, this row voter, these new voters 
you know, you're not, you're not, Kathy talks about this all the time. Like you're not polling, you pull uh, reliable, um, likely voters, which are not mm -hmm. first time voters. So, yeah, um, I'm actually wondering how many new voters come out of the woodwork. Cause remember, like we had like record turnout in 2020, which was 62%. Right. So there yeah. are still a lot of really complacent voters. And on this one, like I genuinely wonder, like, one, what turnout will be. And two, like the, how bad the polls are, because you, like you said, like there's no way to predict what somebody who's never voted is going to do. They're mm -hmm. not going to get a phone call. Right. Because yeah. they they poll registered voters, but they don't as often they they vote like likely voters and previous voters. Right. Two of the last three elections is usually the uh, the go to. Um, and yeah, I like, that's a huge swing, right? For, for mm -hmm. polls to be that off, there's, there's a variable not being considered. And I, I, I wonder if we if, like, what if we see 70% turnout in November? Can you imagine? Oh. The polls have been really, really bad in the last few cycles. And it's just, I don't know. It's like really bad. And a lot of them don't even make sense. Like the one, like the, what was the New York times poll or whatever that had like Trump up by 20 points among. 18 to 35 year olds is something that doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. So. But you always have outlier polls, like just randomly weird ones. But yeah, like I think polling is about to have another come to Jesus like they did after 2016. Cause like they figured a little bit of it out in 2016. But like I said, then like there is a new variable that like the old polling models don't consider. Cause they really haven't changed their polling models that much since like the nineties, I think. And the the way we communicate the way we like digest information the, the access we have to information i think that needs to be more taken into consideration like i think the polling methodology needs to include where do you get your news like because if you're polling likely voters and it's all cnn voters or like viewers you're gonna get different results than if you're getting msnbc viewers or fox viewers and i feel like given the nature of how media is that that's an important methodology like because i can call myself a democrat but if i'm a democrat watching fox news am i really right or mm -hmm. i can call myself an independent but if i'm watching msnbc all day i'm not right and i think that is what's skewing the data is a third of voters are just so pissed off at the two-party system that they're independents so like i think some polls might over like poll republicans because of how many Republicans are independents, you know, because we all know yeah. if you say you're a moderate independent, no, you're not. You're a Republican that doesn't want to <laughs> admit that you're a Republican, which fair, but like that's what you are. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's my thought. So anyway, it just uh, yeah, but again, this is the first election in Alabama since their Supreme Court ruled on IVF. So this is probably, I mean, and this woman made uh, her almost her entire campaign about, um, you know, abortion access, IVF. So again, real bellwether on where people's heads are at regarding that people sp really spooked about this IVF stuff uh, among the electorate and it's just driving a lot of people out, man. It's driving a lot of people out. I, I don't know that you win a 25. I don't know if she wins by 25 points in Alabama. If you don't have some Republicans voting for her mm -hmm. uh, as well, yeah. especially in a plus one Trump district um, on that. So we have, in, so let's move from Alabama to Texas in our little uh, tour of hell here. Uh, <laughs> so we're uh, so in Texas, you had a group of, um, local Republican officials attend a group, attend a meeting by this group, um, True Texas Project, which has been labeled an ex extremist group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Um, they were hosting a group called Abolish Abortion Texas, AATX, uh, which has made a name for itself by calling for the uh, execution of anyone, any woman who uh, receives an abortion or engages in or receives IVF treatments. Um, so this is a long video. I don't know. We'll just play a couple of minutes of this. But anyway, this was hidden camera. The local uh, Democratic Party chair infiltrated this meeting and got to life to for two, life for life. The same penalty for harming or killing a born person is also imposed by God in Islam for killing a pre-born person. Mm -hmm. There's no difference in the value of born people and pre-born people. The question is, if you've been alive during a genocide, you know, Nazi Germany, think of Stalinist Russia, think of Rwanda in 1994. What would you have done about it? In short, abortion is murder. And that's starting at the moment of fertilization, even prior to implantation. So uh, the Plan B pill, or what's known as the morning after pill, which is used to terminate or kill a baby prior to implantation, that is an abortion. Other forms of abortion in this category would include 
uh, what happens in IVF when a, uh, a fertilized egg is created and is oftentimes destroyed. Those that do are terminated and are destroying a human life. IVF. What is that? In vitro fertilization. Fertilization of Abolish Abortion Texas. We are an a specifically, explicitly Christian organization. What gives human beings our objective, eternal, eternal value is that we are made in the image of God. Reborn are being taken to death, and they're being willingly taken there by their own parents. They know it's a person. They know it's a baby. They just say, well, that's violating my personal autonomy. Yeah, it's, it's a human. I can kill a human. It's right in these circumstances. We have a whole bunch of candidates who are running today who have expressed their willingness to support abolition as well. I'm very excited about the upcoming session. And it gives a list of uh, politicians yeah. who have uh, taken their pledge. They have a pledge to um, outlaw. They, they have politicians sign a pledge to outlaw abortion in all cases. And by the way, yeah, this group supports the death penalty for women who get abortions as a result of um, incest or rape. Uh, the ex execution for pregnant minors who are raped, just uh, execution across the board. And the rest of that video is really chilling. They, they get into a lot of, uh, you know, talking about biblical things like they talk about how in the bible it states that the father is the head of the household and they get into this debate about whether or not the father should also be charged uh with murder if or if his daughter gets an abortion because of you know his biblical responsibility over the child and of course they give the father a pass it's all you know, i was gonna it's, say i was like i'm almost yeah. impressed that they're including men in their in their horrid rules for once but no but no no they came through it becomes a so. it becomes a really creepy cheerleading fest by the end about every of, with everybody in the room sort of celebrating this getting behind this idea that the death penalty should be for in portions but so we love but also just so basic much. biology like uh you know <laughs> like uh that is that in vitro fertilization is not a uh is not a abortion i don't know if these people know how and neither that works. Plan B. <laughs> just plan B. Like plan B stops mm -hmm. the actual egg from fertilize the uh, the, mm -hmm. the sperm from fertilizing the egg. I don't know why they would it's just it's crazy that they <laughs> these people are scary, honestly. Like mm -hmm. the fact that he could sit in a room full of people and just make these claims that one mm -hmm. aren't true and then say things like death penalty for these people and then mm -hmm. like have no empathy for people who are raped or incest or anything like that it's scary that people can sit in a room say all those things and no one yeah. like calls them out for it like everyone sitting mm -hmm. there you know kind of agrees with this and and that's what i think you know that's that's this is obviously why donald trump has gone to like selling mm -hmm. bibles and talking about god here and there because yeah. they've decided like we don't need like minority votes and women votes if we can just mm -hmm. get the evangelicals and the men to make their wives vote for us as well so i think they've like mm -hmm. I, I i mean i think we're a few months away from like i mean he said some pretty outlandish things but um mm -hmm. from like going full on like really outlandish because i feel like they think that the evangelicals just will jump on as long as it's mm -hmm. anti-abortion you know and, yeah. and, yeah. and it's kind of scary that some of them do yeah, like the the fact that they can't read the tea leaves on this one still is mm. almost remarkable, right? But like, I love that they've coined this preborn term. Pre That's yes. an interesting one. Um, but it's like to the point you made earlier, right? Like they have the same access to information. They have the same internet. This guy's making shit up, right? Like, yep. and they just believe it. They don't question it. Like they could very much Google how does Plan B work, and they and it would explain it to them, right? But like, I, I want to give, I want to get your perspective on something because I went on this rant about this ages ago with Troy, or a couple of weeks ago, about mm -hmm. how like the life at conception pisses me off because it basically like eliminates the woman's role in pregnancy. Like if it's a baby, the second it's conceived, that means that the man made the baby and the woman's just there to carry it around until it's yeah. ready to come out. Right. It's completely diminishing the, the literal labor and like bodily resources that go into a woman built like a woman's body builds that child. It is not a child because it hasn't sucked the calcium out of my bones to grow their own bones yet yeah. right like yeah. and the life at conception to me is just like men's way of saying we're the one that make the babies well it's i mean let's be real here like everything is about yeah it's the true. man like, <laughs> the man, like fair, fair. men decided we're going mm -hmm. to do these things and then they 
wrote about it in religious books and stuff, you know, and they passed it on and then people, you know, so I mean, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, that the credit of all these things are going to men. And I mean, Mm -hmm. I just, I, I get offended just by the fact that like, you have mostly just men who are mm-hmm. leading these discussions. And and I know, like, I mean, the self-misogyny sometimes kills me because, like, yeah. I see women in comments saying things that I'm like, gosh, like, you're a handmaid's tale. Like, mm-hmm. like you gotta, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it, but, but, you know, like, we're, I feel like we're moving more toward this whole, like, I, I have too many people I know that are talking about, like, men need to be more manly and, like, and then like women in the comments saying like, yeah, I want a man to be my man and, and lead me and stuff. And it's like, lead you? Like, who came up with this idea that women need to be led? Like, I hear this, I hear this from rational people who I think Yikes. aren't dummies. And and so, yeah, it, it works because I think, you know, and I, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know you guys' religious beliefs and I'm not downing religion, mm-hmm. but I think that a lot of the things, if you can get people to believe some of these things and mm-hmm. these religious writings, you mm-hmm. can almost to believe anything because they've yep. already like kind of capitulated to like, yeah, anything is possible, you know? And so mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I, I just, yeah, just it's scary. It. Yeah. I, I agree with that entirely because like the, the, the way the Republican party kind of doubled down on the evangelical vote and mm-hmm. the way that they are, like you've heard some of them like straight up saying we need to repeal the 19th amendment. And I've seen women in my comments being like, you know what? You're right. I shouldn't be able to like the fuck, like the fuck, yeah. like I, I, it it's blows weird. my mind. Mm-hmm. It's weird. The, uh, it blows my mind. yeah, it's the, the women's responses to it is, is just very weird. And you did have a lot of women in this room, like older boomer women that clearly have like kids and grandkids and, you know, uh just really cheering this on it's like seriously like they're they're mm-hmm. so short-sighted they they would so they're suggesting that they would like put their own like grandchildren to death over something like this like no they wouldn't they would go to bat for their own kids they're just thinking yeah. about like other people's mm-hmm. children that they wouldn't mind you know putting to the sword over this to make some sort of uh to make some sort of point but it's amazing to me how we're regressing in this country to to, to barbarism i mean if you study like if you study healthcare access in other countries you know, other countries are were inspired by Roe v. Wade's 1973, and they've passed like a lot of uh, you know countries in Europe, Asia, Africa, like passing um, access to abortion laws, making abortion legal. We're going backwards, mm-hmm. uh, and it's uh, it doesn't bode well for women in this country. It's already not boding well. You're already seeing you know women getting sick, women getting septic, women dying. So it's um it's it's uh it, it's a very bar it's a barbaric system that these people are trying to create in the United States for for women. Um, I think so I know like scary D, to D's point earlier like historians are going to be studying this time period for a long time. What are they going to call it? I think I got it. I think it, the the American Middle Ages, right? <laughs> yeah. We're regressing and re- leaning yes. on religious nonsense and like truthfully the woke thing like that's just enlightenment ideas so like they're trying to reverse the enlightenment back to what was the middle age like it's ridiculous i the, i i hate it here i hate it speaking of uh, alabama so you now have doctors in alabama that have been performing c-sections instead of um dnc's to remove miscarriages because they don't want to there's a gray area there that's for, fucking ridiculous are um, you kidding me no it's, they're it's gonna been happening yeah i i I want to so, throw things. I'm just going to throw things. I'm just going to. C-sections gonna, are not, um, you know. Not that's exactly, invasive yeah. surgery. That's major yeah. surgery. Like. Yeah. Uh, uh, so anyway, I got it's nothing. pretty. I got nothing. It's pretty bad. Uh, we're running a little short on time, so I'm going to jump ahead to this. Uh, so this is a bit of the last story. So Trump uh, went to a, a wake for an NYPD officer, uh, Jonathan Diller, was killed at mm-hmm. a traffic stop. Uh, went to uh, just showed up at the guy's wake and for his family. I don't even know if he was. I saw some reports that he wasn't even invited, mm-hmm. um, but he showed up, took pictures with the family. All this there was a line of NYPD cops outside, clearly set up as a photo op. So he walks out, and there's already a line of cops sitting there and microphones and all this stuff. So he's going to give a, a talk to the press after. Um, the, uh, you know, never mind the fact that he's been spending the last year calling the guys on January 6th that attacked cops, you know, Patriots yeah. and hostages yeah. and all this stuff. So, yeah. 
Uh, it's not exactly he's not exactly backing the blue, and you know, in terms of January six and all that. Uh, but the officers of uh, or the the family of Brian Sicknick, who's the guy that died on January six, the officer um, called called him out for doing this. Uh, they were in an interview with the New York Daily News. Um, Charles Sicknick said he makes sure he gets his face out there. Trump, this guy's a criminal. He's the reason my son is dead because of the riot at the Capitol. He's a publicity hound. Trump does whatever will get him votes and helps Donald Trump. There's nothing good, um, the good about this man. Brian's uh, Brian Sicknick's brother Kenneth said the fact that he states he's law and order, but he sent a mob that ultimately ended up mm -hmm. killing my brother. Uh, he has such a lack of awareness of what he does. He's using that officer's death as a campaign campaign platform. So, yeah, just a rare, you know, uh, kind of evil to um, pose at a, a photo op. And by the way, you know, police are, police are killed every day in this country. I mean, is yeah. he gonna is he mm -hmm. gonna go to every single? You know, it, it's not like he's it's not like Biden has never been to a you know, police officer's wake or whatever. You know, honoring honoring the first responders and military. So the fact that Trump went to one of these as a photo op does not exactly make him a, a hero there. But. Yeah, he. I, I said to someone, uh, you know, Donald Trump, there was uh, four police officers, I think, who have um, died as a result of January 6th. He's never visited their families. He did yeah. their wakes. Mm -hmm. He didn't a word about them. He does not care about cops. He cares about photo ops. He cares about becoming the next president. That's it. I mean, let's just be real. Guys, he's a disgusting person. He just really is. He just really is. And the fact that these people are like, oh, look at Trump. Wants to... Come on, please. Mm -hmm. Please. Yeah, and he wants to stay that... out of jail. That's it. He yeah. only wants to be president, Absolutely. so he stays out of jail. That's it. Absolutely. I mean, and, I, and I, you know, they, they like you said, he's he's calling these guys heroes and, you know, wrote mm -hmm. a new national anthem with them. And <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. we, when, when the black national anthem was saying at this, yeah. time, they acted like, you know, Joe Biden created it the day before or something like that. <laughs> They had never heard of because, it before. It was because so Joe Biden's going to be the one to write the Black National Anthem, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's definitely where it's coming from. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! Oh my gosh, <laughs> people! I swear, I that's can't. a good point. They're always like, "Oh yeah, we have one national anthem in this country." But, yeah. yeah, and the, he wrote it. Well, no, because we just broke down the bridge. Remember, Francis Scott Key? So we yeah. need a new. We need a new we one. <laughs> I never jerk. did like the bridge in that song. Uh, so the, um, <laughs> so the other part of what spread was this lie that, uh, and it started with David Zare, who's this host on real America's voice, which is fucking, the fact that I know all this stuff is just, just, uh, that anyway, concerning. that's Steve Bannon's thing. Concerned. Real America's voice is Steve Bannon's, uh, site. Um, so David Zare has a show on that. He was on interviewing with Jack Posobiec and he said, just kind of out of the blue. I don't even, it, it almost, when you watch it, it almost just seems like he, he kind of just, it just was kind of word vomit. He didn't even really kind of, you know, know what he was saying, but he said that, that uh, Trump had paid the mortgage for this family, the slain officers family that he had offered to like pay their mortgage. Well, that took off like wildfire on the internet. You had Ryan Fournier, who's the chair of um, students for Trump. Uh, tweet that out and say, Oh, you know, I keep telling everybody what a kind heart Trump has. Uh, you know, and then just all these like MAGA on Twitter talking about Trump paying this guy's mortgage. Trump didn't pay this guy's mortgage. It was paid by Tunnels to Towers Foundation, which is this, this is what they do. They pay mortgage the mortgages for families of slain, um, you know, military personnel and first responders. Uh, they they took up a campaign to pay Diller's family's mortgage. Trump had nothing to do with that. Um, so you know, Trump Trump is uh, hemorrhaging money over his legal cases. He's grifting money off his supporters to pay for his legal fees. You know, like this guy's not reaching into his own pocket to pay for some, some guy's mortgage, especially if it's just a photo op. But yeah, he yeah. barely pays his own mortgage. Yeah, dude, this dude is dude is hawking shoes. He's hawking <laughs> yeah. NFTs, yeah. Bibles. Yeah. My man had Trump water, a freaking board game. <laughs> like this dude is a freaking walking Facebook marketplace, bro. Like, this dude is like. <laughs> This dude is a joke, man. Like, I know. Yeah. I remember when shoes. I was a kid, like, I could have sworn, like, back in, when I was a kid in like the <laughs> '80s and the '90s, I could have sworn everybody thought he was a joke. Like, but like, I thought he was supposed to be like a social meme that we all just laughed at him yeah. for having a golden toilet. I didn't know people actually took him seriously until like eight years ago or whatever, and I'm horrified by it. Like he was the stupid asshole with the golden toilet, and now he's 
Yikes. Yeah. yeah, I think it's rich people being rich with each other. I think they just, yeah, they're all rich. They, you know, people talk about, oh, black people love Trump. They didn't love him. It was quid pro quo. They got something from him. He got something from them. It was now, now that he ran for president, they're like, no, that dude's racist. We've, we've known that. We're just all rich, though. We just, like, I think people put up with stuff when they're all just throwing money mm-hmm. around. Like, yeah. That's why you have all these crazy things happening, you know? So, Zara issued a retraction on his saying that. Uh, Trump was paying the mortgage. He's like, oh, yeah, that, that's but sorry if I said the wrong thing. If that was misinformation, I apologize. Um, people like Fortier have have left their their posts up claiming that even even getting a community note saying, no, Trump did not pay this guy's mortgage. Uh, they've they've left it up. So my my lie this week is Ryan Fortier just uh, uh, trying to spread the the, the message that Trump you're paid this guy's mortgage. Crap. You're lying sack of crap. You're lying, scheming, stinking, nasty sack of liquid crap. <laughs> that's my, uh, that's Troy's lie of the week. Troy has a song. Dave, you didn't know. Yeah. Liquid yeah. crap is pretty liquid rough. Crap is... Yeah, that was uh, crap. <laughs> that's the only thing I'm going to remember from this entire <laughs> deal here. Is that how Dave, like, finally. That's how we're Troy like, out weirded you know. by conspiracies. It's good. I like that. Coach D, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Um, do you have anything you want to plug? I guess, uh, I don't know. Just check out Coach D on on the Midas Touch YouTube page. Uh, frequent contributor there. Um, like I said, one of my favorites on on Midas Touch. He's also on on Mine TikTok. Um, are you on the Insta? Are you on the Insta? Is the I'm on Instagram too? at Coach D underscore speaks. I'm on YouTube at Coach D underscore speaks. I'm I'm everywhere now. Yeah. I'm trying to be everywhere. <laughs> I want to be like you guys. One day I'm gonna have a podcast also or something. Who knows? I don't know. And maybe one day I'll be on Vitus. Like we'll just trade. We'll just yeah, trade. yeah. We're... <laughs> and we can all be in the same cool kid club. It'll yeah. be great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh you thank you, Kirsty, for coming on the show. Come on anytime. Thanks, Kathy, for a great conversation. Hey, check us out on YouTube if you want to see the video of the episodes. Check us out on uh, the Just Buy Less Coffee YouTube page. Uh, if you want to get a little bit more in depth with us, head on over to Patreon, p a t r e o n dot com slash Just Buy Less Coffee. You can subscribe five bucks a month, get access to behind the scenes content, bonus content, guest uh, interviews that um, you know, are, are Patreon exclusives. Our deep dive series is back, Patreon exclusive. Uh, Kathy and I nerd out, out nerd, nerd out on various subjects. I think we're going to come back with that next week, Kathy. Maybe what are we doing? First ladies or something like that? We're going to. Or like more uh, more conspiracies, maybe more more uh, royal conspiracies. Know. I yeah. don't know what should what should we talk about. I we'll figure want, out something. I don't know. Oh, I was going to do political conventions. I thought like the history. Oh, okay. Of, All right. Well, we did that already, I guess. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, do you, like I don't know. I, I'm on this thing about how much this election year is like 1968, and it horrifies me. And like how every time Democrats have a convention in Chicago, shit goes wrong. So I um. <laughs> I'm just in a I'm just in a place. I want to I want to do oh. a deep dive. <laughs> yeah, it's 1968. Sorry to scare you there. Again. Sorry to scare you all there. Good. I mean, all good. It's all good. Okay. Uh, so yeah, check it. So subscribe to Patreon if you want to get access to that subscriber only content. If you're listening to the episodes on Apple, Google, Spotify, make sure you're downloading the episodes. Download it to your device, um, and that's how we are ranked with other news and political podcasts. Is our download numbers so. Thank you, Coach D. Thank you, Kathy, for a great conversation. And we will see everybody next time. You've been listening to Just Buy Less Coffee, answering the deeper questions of American politics, featuring Troy Matthews at Keep Troy Blue and Kathy Cannon at Cannon's Fodder. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Threads, and X. All opinions are our own.